So um, after yesterday's um, BBC, yeah, people seem uh, quite yeah invigorated. It was quite a hopeful thing seeing seeing uh, the goodness in people. So this morning, Venerable Sumton found another such article. Okay, so it's in Time magazine, and it's interesting. Um, the title is Respond to Hate with Love. Muslim organizations raise thousands to benefit Pittsburgh synagogue shooting victims. And it was written by Alejandro de la Garza, who's Latino. So this is America, you know? And that, that's what I really like. Okay, so... It says, as Pittsburgh continues to reel from a tragic weekend, a Muslim-led effort has begun a crowd-funded campaign to raise money for the victims of Saturday's synagogue shooting. Posted on Launch Good, a Muslim-focused crowdfunding site, the effort aims to help support the short-term needs of the victims and families by raising money for medical bills, funeral costs, and other expenses after a gunman stormed the services at Pittsburgh's Tree of Life Synagogue, killing 11 and wounding six before being captured by the police. The charity drive has already been a success, with organizers claiming to have raised an average of $2,000 an hour since launching the effort on Saturday. It's amazing. Within six hours, the campaign had already reached its initial goal of 25,000. In less than 24 hours, it had broken 50,000. This is a, a Muslim, you know, charity, a uh, funding site. Two Muslim led nonprofits, Celebrate Mercy and Empower Change, organized the fund a fundraising drive in partnership with the Islamic Center of Pittsburgh and the Tree of Life Synagogue, which will work together to distribute the funds to victims and their families. <clears throat> Tarek El Masidi, excuse my not very good pronunciation of Arabic names, or could be Afghan names, I don't know. Anyway, excuse me. So he, the founding director of Celebrate Mercy, says the effort is part of his group's larger belief in responding to hatred with acts of goodness. Oh, we recognize that the money can't, he says, he, we recognize that the money can't bring back loved ones that families have lost so tragically, nor can it physically heal any of the wounds, El Masidi told Time. But we do hope the money can in some way uplift their spirits, lift the burdens of funeral expenses and medical costs. And I think more than the value of the money is just the fact that they thought to do it and that they're acting in support. And that human support is uh, says much more than the money does. For those Pittsburgh Muslims closer to the tragedy, the effort is also simply about helping neighbors and rebuilding their community. So one of them uh, said those, oh, Washi Mohammed, the executive director of the Islamic Center of Pit Pittsburgh, and Engage Pen uh, Pennsylvania, a nonprofit Muslim advocacy um, organization, said, those who were stolen from us by this hateful person were like family. We feel obligated to follow this prophetic tradition on standing up for the Jewish community. I hope they have print this in Israel. <laughs> Yeah, and give Netanyahu a big copy of it. <laughs> the Pittsburgh Muslim community extends our deepest sympathy and condolences to the victims, their families, and all of our Jewish brothers and sisters, the Islamic Center of Pittsburgh said in a statement. We condemn this hate crime unequivocally and denounce all forms of hatred and bigotry. The Pittsburgh community is our family, what happens to one of us is felt by us all. 
Mohammed added that the local Muslims have also pledged to support the Jewish community in non-monetary ways during this difficult period, offering trips to the grocery store, protection during services, or help with other needs. And I remember uh, right after 9-11 happened, so many people from different religious groups, I was living in Seattle at the time, went to the mosque there and uh, ran patrol and, you know, so that they didn't experience any flag from it. For El Masidi, the past few years have not been an easy time to be an American Muslim, which is all the more reason to reach out to others in their times of need. He said, for one community that's feeling that for one community that's feeling threatened to reach out to another community that's also feeling threatened. Hopefully it will inspire other people around the country and around the world to engage in similar action. This latest fundraiser is only the latest of Celebrate Mercy's outreach efforts, which they say are inspired by the teachings and life of the Prophet Muhammad. Following the 20, uh, 10, 2012 attack in Benghazi, Libya, the group organized a campaign for Muslims from around the world to write condolence letters to the family of slain ambassador Chris Stevens. In the end, they helped send, send 7,700 letters from Muslims in 115 countries. The group has also raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to benefit the San Bernardino shooting victims in 2015 and to repair vandalized Jewish cemeteries in St. Louis and Philadelphia in 2017. If there is a silver lining related to this tragedy, it's that the Muslim and Jewish communities that have not worked that closely together are starting a dialogue, said El Masidi. For the first time, they're able to put aside geopolitics or international, geo, yeah, geopolitics or international politics and really work together for a human cause. So that's really beautiful. And it reminds me of when um, after, right after um, Trump's inauguration and with the Muslim ban, you know, not allowing people from different countries, then uh, a bunch of rabbis went to New York City and might have it might have even been in front of T Trump Tower, I can't remember, but they staged a demonstration, you know, in protest about this. Yeah, and a lot of them got arrested and they kind of knew they would, yeah. But again, it's like one... Um, you know, one persecuted community helping another persecuted community. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. And hopefully we'll go beyond persecuted communities altogether <laughs> at some point. Okay. But, um, yeah, so in, in situations of tragedy, you often see this kind of goodness coming out where people overlook past things, and they overlook how uh, division into groups and what happened however many years ago when none of us were ever alive, um, <laughs> you know, how uh, we were able to look past all that kind of rubbish. Yeah.